now to the second part of my conversation with billionaire Warren Buffett. I spoke with him in Omaha last week at the Nebraska Furniture Mart, the largest furniture store in America. It is just one small piece of a huge portfolio of investments owned by his company, Berkshire Hathaway, but one that Buffett takes particular pride in as part of his legacy. Both the Senate and House Republican health care reform bills would roll back taxes that are part of Obamacare. Buffett has taken issue with that, and that's where my conversation picks up. One of the things the Republicans are looking at, as, as you know very well, is doing away with the so-called Obama, Obamacare right. surcharge on people earning a higher income. Yeah. So Republicans are looking at taking that away uh, or doing away with that, which would mean a tax cut, you said, for people yeah. like you. Yeah. Well, I, I, I brought my tax return along uh, for last year. I filed this on April 15th. And if the Republican, well, if the bill that passed the House with 217 votes had been in effect this year, I would have saved, I can give you the exact figure, I would have saved $679,999 or over 17% of my tax bill. There's nothing ambiguous about that. I will be given a 17% tax cut. And the people it's directed at are couples with 250,000 or more of income. You can entitle this you know, relief for the rich act or something, because it, I've got friends where it would have saved them as much as it gets into the 10 million and up figure. But I might point out, might be an interesting question. I, I think members of the Senate and House get 174,000 a year, but most of them have, if you look at the disclosures, they have substantial other income. If they get to higher than 250,000 as a married couple or 200,000 as, as a single person, they have given themselves a big, big tax cut if they, if they voted for this. Well, speaking of taxes, let's just use that as a as a as an entry point to talk about it. Um, you shared some of your tax yeah. return with us for 2016. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, but before I ask you about that, how wealthy are you? I mean, I'm reading that you're 77 billion. 99 percent of my net worth is in Berkshire Hathaway stock. Uh, every share of that stock has been pledged to philanthropy, so I'm a trustee for that stock. So it'll go to society. And then a good bit of the rest will as well. But if you add up what's in my name, if we go down to my safe deposit box, <laughs> we will find uh, some stock certificates that are wor worth that much. But as I, uh, you know, I've written, they have no utility to me. They can't do anything to make me happier. I'm already happy. I, I, I'd be happy with, you know, certainly with $100,000 a year, I could be very happy. Uh, and uh, they can't buy anything for me that I want. If they did, I would buy it. And, and, uh, uh, they do have utility to others, so I've got this system to essentially try and translate that into vaccines and education and all of that sort of thing. The reason I bring that up, uh, Warren Buffett, is that that's your that's your your wealth, your worth, and yet on your tax return, uh, you earned 19 million something, right. 19 and a half million last year. Your effective tax rate was 16. 0.3 percent, which we we looked it up. This is what an average couple, a married couple, no children, taking the standard deduction would pay on an income of 136,000. In other words, a couple who earn you earn 143 times more than they do, but your tax rate is the same as they. Yeah, do. I pointed that out in past in the past, and and it's even worse than you say, Judy, because you're looking at what that couple would pay in federal income tax, but they are also paying payroll taxes in overwhelming cases. And my cleaning lady has a 15% tax, you know, just, just from the social, just from the social security that she and her employer pay, but it's, 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 it's kind of incredible. And now they want to cut it. And, no, and they want to cut it for me. Do I, I mean, you know, they, I, mean, I, I, I look like somebody that deserves a cut. <laughs> well, they, the Republicans are talking about uh, lowering taxes. Absolutely. On the, on they want the... to cut my tax 17 percent. They, they saw those figures and were shocked that I was paying that much, apparently. <laughs> but, I mean, among other things, they're talking about doing away with some of the, some of the deductions, charitable deductions, maybe, mortgage deductions, maybe, state and local tax, uh, taxes paid as deductions. Do you have a thought about well, all those? Well, you, you can't really talk about specifics without looking at the whole thing. But if they're talking about making it revenue neutral, you know, I think if they're going to make it revenue neutral, it ought to be it ought to be something other than reven, revenue neutral for the guys like me. Our our rate should go up, allowing others to go down somewhat. I think there ought to be minimum taxes 
for people that make 10 million a year and a different one at a million a year, but certainly a 10 million a year. They also, as you know, want to want to tackle uh, business corporate tax rates. Yeah. They're talking about the current corporate rate lowering it from 35 to 15 yeah. percent. The president's talked about. I guess Speaker Paul Ryan uh, th this week said 20 percent. Uh, what would that mean for you? If, if well, it would, it would it would mean for Berkshire, in all probability, that we would pay less in, in U.S. federal income taxes. But until you see the final thing, you can't tell. Berkshire Hathaway is the second largest corporation on the Fortune 500 this year. Uh, I don't know any case where our competitiveness is being hurt by the federal income tax rate on corporations. Estate taxes? A thought about that? Oh, estate taxes. I mean, I... You hear people call it the death tax. There are going to be two and a half million people die in the United States this year. How many estate tax returns are going to be? Probably about 5,000. And the interesting thing is, if I talk to somebody about welfare mothers or something like they say how debilitating it is to have these food stamps and it takes away their incentive to do anything, if a kid comes out of the right womb in this country, they've got food stamps for the rest of their life. They just call them stocks and bonds. And their welfare officer is their trust officer. I, I mean, I think, I, I think having a a significant estate tax that starts at a fair size level uh, is, is, is if you're gonna have to raise three and a half trillion dollars I think that's a good source of revenue and it, I, it shouldn't apply to you know 99 percent of the people. You've been very I mean very open about your own taxes and and people have taken a look at that and they've also looked at Berkshire Hathaway it has been pointed out that Berkshire Hathaway does take advantage of, of the legal uh, uh, yeah. ability to defer taxes. Yeah. And I, I saw a number, something like $75 billion well, that's dollars because we in haven't deferred cashed taxes. Things that we, just like you, if you've got a stock that's gone up a whole lot until you sell it. But that's just the law. And we, are, we're gonna, we're, we've, we don't have any, any, any of the Cayman Islands or anything like that stuff. But we, we, we follow the law, and, and we've got a million shareholders, and I think they probably expect us to do that. That doesn't mean I don't think the law shouldn't be changed in some way. But I follow the law in terms of my personal return. I do not send an extra $5 million to the, to the Treasury. Your philanthropy, well, mm -hmm. we've talked about it a little bit. It's, uh, it's legendary. You and Bill Gates, Melinda Gates have come together and, and uh, I guess broken all records imaginable for, for giving. Um, at the same time, it's being pointed out that you're also making, you first made that pledge, what, 10, 11 years ago? 2006, yeah. 2006. Mm -hmm. You're now making so much more even than you did then. People are saying, well, wait a minute, you know, is he going to be giving more away? How do, how do you think about that? I mean... Well, I've got it set up so that if I make more, I do give more because I, I'm giving a schedule and that schedule ends 10 years after I die. So it's all... So I'm not setting up... And actually, if they can't use it for endowments or anything. It has to be spent within 10 years, really after my estate's closed, but call it after I die. How much influence do you think you've had on other others with wealth with means to give, to be as generous as, as you well, have Well, a lot of people come back to me on that. And basically, I said, you know, if you're extremely rich, uh, and you've got children, my theory was you give them enough so they can do anything, but not enough so they can do nothing. And I've had more people come back. To it. So apparently, I was smarter in 1980, whatever it was, than I am now. But that seemed to have some influence. Are you comfortable today with what you're giving? I mean, does it feel... It's exactly what I wanted to do. Does it feel like the right thing to be it's doing the right, right it's now? It's the right thing because it's going, it's going to people who believe, as a, as a gays, for example, that every life is of equal value. I mean, the truth is I've got a lot of wealth, little pieces of paper, says Berkshire Hathaway on it. They're claim checks on all kinds of goods and services in the world. They can buy anything. I can buy 400-foot yachts and have 20 homes and all that. I wouldn't be happier. But they can buy anything. And once they move... Into the, into the hands of people who are working like hell on getting something accomplished in areas I want them to. You know, I love the idea of getting, getting amused, and that's what they're doing. You said it, it wouldn't make you happy to have 100, 200 homes and yachts and so forth. What does make Warren Buffett happy? I, I, I just have a lot of fun doing, doing my job. I mean, I can do anything I want, basically. Uh, well, it doesn't involve athletic ability or anything like that. But, but, it's, but if it's if something I could buy, I could buy, I can buy anything, basically. I've been on 400-foot yachts, and I've, I've lived the life a little bit with people that are, have 10 homes and everything, and I live in the same house I bought in 1958. And if, if I could spend $100 million on a house and make me a lot happier, I'd do it. But I, for me, that's the happiest house in the world. 
and it's because it's got memories and people come back and all that sort of thing. So I am doing what I love to do with people I love, and it doesn't get any better than that, Judy. And but I should be. I mean, why? Why in the hell should I be working at 86 at something that I don't like or with people I don't like? And I see you're drinking a cherry Coke. Uh, how right. do you stay healthy? Well, I think I stay healthy partly by uh, by being happy. Actually, I, I think that. that uh, I think it really helps if your stomach isn't grinding all the time and you're doing things you, you don't want to do or you're working with people that you know. So I, uh, I've gone very light on the, on the uh, diet advice. I, I eat like a normal six-year-old, but if you look at the mortality <laughs> st statistics, I mean, six-year-olds don't die very often. I mean, <laughs> that, 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 that diet's doing something for them. How much sleep do you get? I get quite a bit of sleep. I like to sleep. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll usually sleep eight hours a night. But, uh, no, I have no... No desire to get, to get to work at four in the morning. Well, so many people look at you and they think, oh my goodness, this man, he's accomplished so much, he's been so successful, he's 86 years old, and he's still going strong. I love it. So what are they, <laughs> so what's the secret? The secret is to find what you love to do. I mean, I tell the students, you know, look for the job that you would take if you didn't need a job. I mean, it's that simple. And I was lucky enough to find it very early in life. And then the, the second thing is to have people around you that make you, feel good every day and make you a better person than you otherwise would be. I have more fun doing this than anything else I can think of in the world, and I've seen a lot of other things you could do in the world. Warren Buffett, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Judy. And he does come across as a happy man. And for the record, Warren Buffett is CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, which owns BNSF Railway. It is one of the funders of the NewsHour.